Hey, this is John, Becky, and Ty from Stub Group, and we are here with hopefully another knowledge drop. So Becky, um, can you set us up? What is something that businesses are curious or asking about a lot when they're uh, reaching out for help from Stub Group? I think that um, as of late, we're getting into a place where you know, having a singular product or service that's different from anything anybody else offers is, is not something that's really happening. We we're in a space, you know, with marketing where people have a lot of similar products and one, one product may be slightly different from the other, but they're very much the same. And maybe one of them is not as well known as the other, or um, the company is still brand new. One thing that a lot of people ask is, hey, how do I get my product or my service to show up next to this other product or service that's really similar to mine? Is there a way that I can show up whenever um, someone is searching for this really fancy rug? I want my rug to show up as well. And a lot of times that can get confused with like competitor targeting campaigns and people don't realize that there's actually a way to do something called branding inclusion or even brand exclusion. Let's say you don't want your product to show up next to somebody else. So Ty, can you give us a little bit of a rundown on what exactly it means? What is brand inclusion and what is brand exclusion? So brand inclusion or brand exclusion are basically lists you can create within Google. You go into your shared category, um, shared library. You can create lists by adding brands Sometimes the system will recognize the brand instantly. If the brand is well known, for example, uh, usually the drop down menu will have the brand right away. You can click it. If it's a more of an unknown brand, you can go into a review process. It might take a couple of weeks to get these brands uh, recognized in the system. At that point, you can, again, you can create a brand list of one. You can have a multiple, maybe 20. <laughs> maybe there's a limit to that. I'm not sure yet, but you can use these brand lists in various campaign types, search, video, display, dynamic remarketing. And when it comes to brand exclusion, that's gonna be exclusive to Pmax. However, essentially what they are is you exclude the brands from a campaign, meaning that don't exclude them, don't exclude anything within that campaign or include the brand within the campaign you're using. That campaign can be include the brands that are your competitors only, or it could include your brand as well as some competitors. So in the situation you mentioned, Becky, if somebody has a brand new launch, they want to be associated with some kind of brand that's popular you would include you create your brand list uh, you create that brand you include your brand in that list then when creating your campaign type probably search campaign you would choose right in the category you're looking to choose your brand list you created insert it in there um then add your keywords and you know go right at it so is there any particular businesses that you found um work really well with brand inclusion Yes, brand inclusion. There's, there's multiple businesses like that that work well with it. I've found that since this is in Google's, some one of their newer features, um, it works well with any accounts that have higher volume. So, in the, there are, you want to, there's specific examples I could mention, but basically, e com marketing clients that have, um, that sell products nationally and internationally. So, I can use brand exclusion whenever there's a new product launch. Um, but then, when creating that specific campaign, include that brand in the competitor or as a competitor within the, in the inclusion, then do some, some uh, you know, a little bit deeper dive into the new competitor and make sure that there's synonymous products across the, our brand or my client's brand and their brand. And then use negative keywords to exclude anything that might not be associated with that brand to get even more drilled down to the, uh, to the product launch. Awesome. What about exclusion? Have you had any particular situations where that's been really beneficial for a client? Yes, exclusion can be used in various ways. If you want to maintain brand integrity, you don't want a high value product or service being associated with that of one that's lower. For example, you want to exclude those brands and make sure nothing comes shows up within that product. For example, I have a client that you offers van conversion services, very high end. Um, we found that a lot of times, a lot of uh, searches were showing up in RV, motorhome related searches. So we found the brands related to that, right? Let, you know, did some search term uh, diagnoses as well as communication with the client. Um, included those brands within a camp, uh, within a list first, 
then use that as an exclusion to make sure we uh, stay out of those out of those particular searches. Um, as far as doing either exclusion or inclusion, um, are there any particular challenges that you think that you faced or, and, and what did you do to resolve them or what are the challenges that people might face while trying to implement this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, because it's new, when it's, some of Google, uh, it's a newer feature from Google, you know, over time, I suspect the algorithms will, will you know, perfect, let's say. And you have, let's say, less control as, as something we're using negative, negative keywords, exact match, et cetera, et cetera. There is some um, challenges I've found relating, pertaining to just getting the campaign launched right off the bat. When I've launched cam brand exclusion campaigns specifically or excluding a brand, excluding the client's brand, for example, within Performance Max, I've noticed there's been times where there's been no traction whatsoever um, initially. However, using the campaign without brand exclusion, within this is Performance Max example, but it could pertain to search it as well. If there's metric history already existing within that account, um, then adding the brand later, brand, adding the list, which was created later, will you know, reduce that number of, of sales, which is what we're trying to do in this particular case is to exclude the brand because for brand, brand related sales, then there, the traction is there. So it's kind of a, some nuance there, I've, I've noticed that. So in other words, starting the brand campaign without exclusion and then adding it later. Um, that's something I found to, as a, you know, like a hurdle that I've overcome. Awesome. Uh, John, what do you have uh, when it comes to thoughts about brand inclusion and brand exclusion? Yeah, like, like Ty mentioned, one of the handy things of Google finally coming out with this um, tool is that Depending on the size of the brand, on their end, Google will do a lot of the work to identify misspellings and foreign language variants and things of brand names. So historically, we've had to, you know, either guess or retroactively see the many ways that people misspell a brand name and then one by one add those as negative keywords. Um, Google's still not perfect. There's still some of that has to be done, but they take some of that work out by uh, doing that on their end and just saying, okay, anything related to, you know, this brand name you can exclude. So I, I like that. Um, I think I would say strategically when you're thinking about whether you should use brand inclusion or exclusion, just really think through to appeal to people who are searching for a competitor. If you sell, if you sell sheets and people are looking for a direct competitor of yours that sells sheets, is that potentially an opportunity? for you to capture that business because you know they're looking for this other competitor that means they're in the market for sheets cool let's you know bring them over here and sell them our sheets or do you find when you do that that those people don't convert and so it's a waste of money because they're looking for someone else and they're just clicking on your ads and then you know going nowhere so for most businesses it's going to be a process of testing to figure out whether you can profitably target people searching for competitive terms or not. And if not, then exclusions are a great way to go. If yes, inclusions are a great way to go. And then same thing for your own brand. You you know, need to make the decision, do you want to show ads to people who are searching for your brand? There's a lot of perspectives about that. We made other videos about that that dive more into depth. So if you're watching this, go, uh, go check one of those out. Um, but you know, a lot of nuances that play into that question. So Ty, thanks so much for sharing about brand inclusions and exclusions. If you are watching this video and you don't want to have to deal with all these things and figure out yourself and you just want some experts to help you, we would love to provide that expertise. So you can reach out to subgroup.com for a free consultation and at the very least tap subscribe to get more video content for free, just like this. So until next time, John, Becky and Ty signing off.